Thank you to Target for supporting PBS. Hi, Danielle. Hey, Ellie. How have you been? Same. <laughs> My daughter and I are still really into Broadway and musicals. Music has been a big part of helping me through. I think the playlist that's really been making me feel joyful and happy is one that I call Shower Jams. <laughs> really hyper, up-tempo music that I play so that every morning it feels like I have a little bit of a commute. What I'm so excited to explore is what's being created now. So today we'll be looking at musicians who are using their artistry and their craft to respond to this current moment. Today's one of those days I feel really bad. I don't see any hope. I don't see where this is going. Music producer Ricky Reed was feeling the same way a lot of Americans were in March. Worried and afraid. I don't know what day it is, what time it is. Time is a flat circle, bro. He's worked with an impressive roster of artists, including Halsey, Kesha, Leon Bridges, and last year he hit a career high. 2019 was the year of Lizzo. Here with Ricky Reed. My name is getting more out there and people are knowing who I am. The Grammy goes to Lizzo. Lizzo! But like all of us, this year changed everything. It's like dystopian. Feels like somebody's screaming with a pillow over their mouth, just to sort of get through the day. The world that I had worked so hard to build for myself, you know, was, was collapsing. You know, my first thought was, well, what can I do during this time? I'm so alive, even though I feel a little dead inside. A live stream, that's what we need. You know, me and, and 10,000 others. Welcome to Nice live. Wow, look how untanned my underarms are. My name is Ricky Reed. This is a show where I tend to show you that you're not the only sad one. Ricky went live multiple times a week and it eventually helped him to get through each day. Broadcasting inspiration, screaming into the void. Let me know how you're feeling on a scale of one to 10, decimal point included. I thought I was sort of providing a service almost. We could all gather, process this, commiserate. Should we do a group exhale? <sighs> I started working on music in the middle of the live stream. I'll just show you guys what I do. Here's how I produce. I'm gonna make a drum beat. I'm gonna do this, do that, you know. Two, three, and. The 10th one that I did, oh, I had had the hardest, hardest day and I was working on a song. Just take your time, count your blessings. Just lay right here for a second. It cracked me open and I cried. That was when the whole thing changed. Hello, hello. What up? Dude, you killed it. I was gonna start making my first album in seven years. What up, guys? What's going on? This is a community album. Terrence, are you there? I'm right here. There were days when I needed to reach out to my closest friends. And then you have some people that I've been fans of for years. Dave Longstreth, The Dirty Projectors, Leon Bridges. What's happening, man? Jim James, singer of the band My Morning Jacket, one of my heroes. I just always hope the music is a source of joy to people. Yeah, because that's what it is to me. If I had only known The song, Us, How Sweet It Was, is a story about missing being around people. And to me, it was a love song to humanity. Ricky had an idea to make a music video using his audience's experiences during the pandemic. And a woman who documented her harrowing experience on a sailing trip across the Atlantic reached out, and Ricky featured her footage in the video. Right when this thing was heating up, not only was she missing her love, but she almost lost her life. I also felt a lot of guilt texting friends who are just losing their minds, their hearts, and yeah. people they love. Of course, they talked all about it in the live stream, so I had to drop in. I think so many of us were experiencing that same thing. The guilt, the, the not having a choice. I don't have to cross the Atlantic 
but some of the people that I love are just like miles away from me and I and I can't be with them. This is your intro music. Okay, yeah. let's go. This hey. album. This wouldn't have been made under any other circumstances. It's a reminder to never again take for granted how lucky we were to just exist around each other. All right, see you soon. Love you guys. Peace. Ricky started this pandemic feeling so isolated and used technology to connect. That's what music does. It quite literally syncs us together. Our heads will bob in unison to a beat. Music can be a personal touchstone for a moment in our lives, but it can also become something of an anthem that defines an era. We Shall Overcome, that's been called by the Library of Congress one of the most powerful songs of the 20th century. And it's a defining song for the civil rights movement. This year, people have been protesting in record numbers, and a large amount of protest music has been created to help define this moment. I Can't Breathe by Her. I Just Wanna Live by 12-year-old viral sensation Keydron Bryant. And lockdown by Anderson Pack. The people are rising. We thought it was a lockdown. They opened the Black Lives Matter. We wanted to talk to someone for whom music is the message. What's up, self evident? I'm Madam Gandhi visiting you from New York City. Madam Gandhi has played percussion for MIA and Thievery Corporation. She sees herself first as an activist focused on feminism and then as a musician. We always assume our own powerlessness, but never our own power. Folks ask me, you know, are you a musician or are you an activist? Which is the priority? It's actually my activism did come first. It's a really emotional time. Actually, I think I've ever cried so much at a protest. Usually I find myself really hyped to be on the road, to travel, to speak, to perform. And with those opportunities no longer available because of the quarantine, I've never made so much music in my life. Persistence music is about saying your truth. In 2020, during a time of civil unrest, I find music one of the most powerful ways to teach, to empower, in a way that we really haven't seen before. Settle back in and hang out with us as we perform this virtual show for you. This is called Waiting For Me. I'm Madam Gandhi. Love. Waiting for me is a global protest anthem about moving away from restricted oppressive spaces and into liberation. Brown girls of the world, they need us. Truth is love, love will free us. Love will free us. I want my audience to ask, what does my oppression look and feel like? And what does my freedom look and feel like? I've been living in the wild now. When you taste freedom, you're not trying to get tied down. Here in the words I say, in the way I walk, I'm a part of their lives now. The beat, the hook, the melodies, those things pull you in. And then you might listen and say, oh wow, I'm learning something. I love having my friends remix some of my work, you know, jamming to it. That part feels like, you know, music enables uh, collective action despite having to be in isolation. And in that way, it's actually one of the most effective, positive viruses. I hope that when folks listen to my music, I honestly want them to feel loved and encouraged and seen. Go and do your thing. That's what I actually feel. Thank you. We'd like to thank Target for being a proud supporter of PBS. Since the first Target opened in 1962, their mission has been to help families discover the joy of everyday life. In all 50 states, Target is dedicated to being a good neighbor and working with their communities and partners to make life a little better. There are over 350,000 team members employed by Target to continue their mission every day. To learn more about Target's commitments, you can check out target.com community or click the link in the description. PBS American Portrait is a platform where people can go to in order to share their experiences. So join in. Go to pbs.org slash American Portrait.